welcome grade 11 chemistry students. Today what we are learning about is how to analyze data related to properties of elements within a period. You should be very confused by that. All I mean there is our learning goal is to understand what the periodic trends are. So when we talk about periodic trends, we can talk about uh, the trend that's on the columns on a periodic table. So similarities between elements in the same column. So if you talk about the alkali metals, guys, basically the atomic radius or the atomic size, if you imagine an atom as a sphere from the center of the atom to the outermost electrons, that's the atomic radius or the size. So elements uh, when it, in the alkali metal group, for example, they are similar size compared to the neighboring elements. The ionization energy, the energy needs to remove an electron, that's also similar. So if you recall, guys, um, sodium in water in classroom, it was less reactive than potassium in water. And the reason is, is because of ionization energy. And ionization energy is the energy needed to remove an electron. Now, it required less energy to remove potassium. That's why it happened much more rapidly. And it required more energy for that to release from sodium. That's why it happened slower. So lower ionization energy means faster reaction. That's what we saw in potassium. So atoms in the same columns, they have similar ionization energy levels. Another thing is, is that they're similar reactivity. So both the sodium and the potassium, the alkali metal group, they both reacted with water to, to produce hydrogen gas and so on. And every other group, group two through eight, they all have their own properties and that, uh, that's unique to that group, okay? And finally, uh, they have the same ion charge. You know that group one has a one plus charge, group two has a two plus charge, and so on all the way through to seven, um, which has a negative one charge, okay? So you, you know the charge based on what group it is in. Now we're gonna talk about specific trends here today, um, one of them being ionization energy. But we'll start with the most important trend, which is atomic size, which is also the same as atomic radius. We're going to talk deeper about ionization energy, then something called electronegativity, and the least important trend in our class, electron affinity. So you may want to take a couple notes while we do this. So let's talk about our first and most important trend, which is called the atomic size trend, also known as the atomic radius trend. It's the size of the atom measured from the nucleus to the outermost electrons, so it's the radius of the sphere. And there's two general trends for the atomic size. So let's think about them for a moment. So what do you think should happen as I go down the periodic table? As you go down a group, should it increase or decrease and why? And finally, we're saying it's, it's, we're saying that it's increasing. Why is it increasing as we go down group? And something strange here now as well, the atomic size decreases as we go across. Let me show you if, I, if that's not clear to you. So when we look at the periodic table, as we go down a group, okay, what ends up happening is the atom itself gets larger. You should know why that is. And hopefully you were thinking that it's because every time we go down a period from period one to period seven, we are adding shells. Period one has one shell, period two has two, and so on. So the atom, or sorry, if you think about an atom, most of the space is taken up by the electrons, so therefore, the atomic size is getting larger. The strange thing happens when you go from left to right because I'm adding more electrons as I go from left to right. We are not increasing the shell. So if I take a look at period two, as we go across period two, we actually get smaller. We're not adding any shells, but we're getting smaller. Why is that? Let's see if we can explain it. So again, the atomic size gets larger as you go down. You have your nucleus, positively charged nucleus, and these are the shells where the electrons sit. The first shell you have two, and the next shell you have eight, and so on. So as we go down a group, what we're doing is we're effectively adding the number of shells that we have, and electrons make up the size of the atom, so we're larger. So as we go from left to right across a period, so we want to make sure we specify this, so from left to right, across the period, you have something called a greater effective nuclear charge. Let's explore what this means. So as we go from left to right across the periodic table, let's start at like this element here, which has two shells. So this would actually be lithium, okay? So lithium is actually slightly bigger than beryllium. 
and beryllium slightly bigger than boron. And what happens is, is as you go from left to right, it gets smaller. And the reason is we are not adding any new shells, but what's happening is, is that you have a greater effective nuclear charge, which means if you count the number of protons, you are adding more protons as you go from left to right, okay? So this is the key word. So you are adding more protons, which increases the charge in the center. And so what this means is that the atom actually shrinks because you have more protons. Same amount of shells, but more protons. Remember the protons are like good girls, like bad boys. Positive things in the middle. You got more positive things. The electrons actually get pulled in tighter. The atom actually gets smaller. So again, this is our general trend for atomic radius or atomic size. As we go down, we get larger because we are adding shells. As we go from left to right, we are getting smaller. And the reason is, is we're adding more protons, and that's pulling our electrons in tightly and close. So this is actually a diagram of the sizes in, uh, I think it's picometers or something. It's like really, really tiny. And you can see that as I go down a group, more shells are added, get larger. As I go from left to right, we get smaller. So you can specifically see it in period two. You get really, really tiny because you have that greater effective nuclear charge. The atomic radius is the most important uh, trend that we need to know. So let's talk about our next trend, second trend, ionization energy. It's the energy required to pull an electron from an atom. Okay, so all atoms except hydrogen have more than one electron, so therefore they have more than one ionization energy. For example, like for the first electron, it's the first ionization energy. If you have to pull one off after that, it's the second ionization energy and so on. So the general trend is, is that the ionization energy tends to decrease down a group, and ionization energy increases across left to right. So this here is the general trend. As we go up, it increases, or it decreases as you go down, and it increases from left to right. So the atom with the highest ionization energy is going to be helium right here. Let's explain why. So ionization energy tends to decrease down a group, and the reason is, is that the protons are farther away from the electrons. So protons are farther away from electrons as well as we have something called the electron shielding effect. Let's look at an atom to see if we can explain this. So as we go down a group, what we're doing, woo, a little wonky there. As we go down, we're adding more shells, okay? And those shells make the atom larger. So therefore, the electrons, the outermost electrons, this little red thing I'm drawing here, they are close to the positive charge here, farther away from the positive charge, and even farther away from the positive charge there. So you have a distance issue where even though you're adding more protons as you go down, uh, the electrons are much farther away, so therefore much easier to remove, and therefore more shells means lower uh, ionization energy. The other thing is, is that these shells, it's called electron shielding, they, they, the shells here, the shell here is actually shielded somewhat. So it's the, the power of the nucleus is, is harder to, to reach that because there's other electrons that it's trying to pull in. So therefore, it's shielded from it a bit and therefore lower ionization energy. So as you go across, for the second one here, ionization energy increases across the period from the left to right. Protons are closer to the electrons, so it's harder to pull an electron away. Remember that the atom's getting smaller uh, as you go from left to right across the periodic table. So the little dot in here is the nucleus, the positive charge. It has a stronger pull on its electron because it's closer together. So that's why ionization energy increases as you go from left to right. If you were to graph the periodic table versus its ionization energy. For example, number one is the ionization for hydrogen. Number two is for helium. And here, this third one down here is lithium. It drops. So we'll go from hydrogen to helium increases and drops way off when you hit lithium. Now, the reason why that is, is if you take a look at the periodic table again, 
that's because you are you are starting a new shell when you start a new shell you see this massive drop because ionization energy increases or decreases as you go across the shell the ionization slowly builds up because the atom gets smaller until you get this is going to be neon it's got a full shell it drops back to way down low once the ionization energy uh, is, is associated with a new shell so each new, new dip is actually a new shell electronegativity is the measure of the attraction of an atom for electrons in a covalent bond so electron negativity is can be described somewhat like this if you have a covalent bond that can be represented by two hydrogens sharing electrons or uh, sorry a hydrogen and a chlorine sharing electrons and everybody thinks they have the octet now the question is is where do these electrons sit do they sit closer to chlorine or do they sit closer to hydrogen well the answer is is that they sit close to the uh, higher electronegative atom I'll show you how to find the value it's actually on your periodic table directly below your element but the electrons end up sitting slightly closer to chlorine okay so as a result hydrogen is kind of losing its electron so it actually becomes what we call slightly positive or partially positive and chlorine becomes partially negative so when two atoms bond the one with a higher electronegativity wins so gen the general trend for electronegativity is is that it tends to decrease down a group as atoms get larger they attract electrons less and less so as you go down atoms can hold on to electrons in a covalent bond less because again the protons are very far from electrons let me show you a diagram as you can see in this diagram here we have two atoms it's almost like a little Bohr Rutherford here <clears throat> and who where are these electrons closer if these are going to be shared they're actually a little bit closer to the smaller atom and because they're a little bit closer to the smaller atom so if this is my distance just D this is smaller so therefore smaller atoms have smaller atoms have greater electronegativity okay so as we go from left to right across a period again we get smaller so therefore electronegativity increases same amount of shells but smaller atoms boron will have a greater electronegativity than lithium this is the second period if you go all the way over I believe it's to fluorine that's the highest one in that group so if we look at the diagram for electronegativity just give me a second here this is actually what it will look like and the most electronegative atom is fluorine if we fall along group two the steps keep getting higher that means electronegativity increases as you go to the right and up because atoms going uh, you know to the right and up are getting smaller so therefore they have higher electronegativity the last trend that we have is something called electron affinity now affinity means to like okay so this is very similar to uh, electronegativity for all intents and purposes they are the same so this is kind of the least important one because it's kind of redundant with electronegativity so it's, but it's kind of a strange definition it's the energy released when an electron is added to a neutral atom so an atom is is stable okay when it becomes stable it releases lots of energy so the the uh, the atoms like for example fluorine has seven electrons and because it has seven it once it gets one electron it's very very stable when it, when it gets that that octet and so when it becomes from unstable to stable it releases tons of energy so anybody with seven valence electrons releases a ton of energy because they're relaxing as they gain that electron you also know that notice that the noble gases are already stable so you, they do not have an electron affinity at all so the general trend is is the size of the atom gets larger the lower the electron affinity so as we go down groups we're adding more shells so therefore the electron affinity decreases similarly as we go from left to right across the periodic table the size gets smaller 
due to our greater effectiveness, if we charge, we're not adding shells, we're just getting pulled together, it increases because the, the atom is smaller as well. So smaller atoms have access, their protons have access to the outer world, whereas bigger atoms with lots of shells, or just big in general, the electrons are very, very far away, okay? Because if you want to grab another electron, you have to reach all this distance to grab an electron. If you are a smaller atom and you need to grab an electron, it's relatively easier. So therefore, smaller you are, greater electron affinity, larger, lower electron affinity. Those are the four periodic trends. You're expected to know those. We'll do uh, questions in class tomorrow. Thanks for listening. Enjoy your day.